Hi, I'm Craig. And I'm Linda. And this is the Indie Travel Podcast at IndieTravelPodcast.com. This is episode 358, and we're talking about packing light, specifically what clothes to pack for short trips and also for long trips. You know, it's very much the same thing, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. I mean, I've put that in there because, you know, some people think you have to pack a lot more for a long trip, but we actually find it more difficult to pack for a short trip than we do when we're packing to travel for a year or two years or indefinitely. Yeah, kind of crazy, eh? Well, us this week, we are in the beautiful Cotswolds region of the UK in uh, Stroud. Yeah, it's been really good. We arrived here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, We're house-sitting, so we've got a temporary dog, a temporary cat, and some pet fish. It's really great. We, We love to walk, and there's lots of forests around here to walk beside. On the weekend, we went and walked alongside a canal for, I don't know, like five or six kilometers and then kept going to make a great big loop back through the forest. I think we walked for about 18 kilometers. Beautiful. And, you know, Stroud's got a wonderful farmer's market as well. So I've been in there and managed to find where they hide the cider and the beer, as well as, uh, you know, all the vegetables and meats and, you know, beautiful things. There was actually a vegan food festival on the weekend that we stopped in at and bought some cider. I was telling someone about that, like, isn't all cider vegan? (laughs) I think a lot of cider is vegan. This cider was particularly delicious because they actually had a cold one in a chili bin and uh, they they sold us that special one that was kind of hidden away because we told them that we were going to be going for this walk alongside the canal and we got a few kilometers down the road, well, down the canal, stopped, had a lovely drink. It was beautiful. Absolutely. The reason it was so tasty, though, wasn't because it was cold. It was because it was hopped. Hopped ciders, man. It's the way to go. Yeah. Cold and hopped. It was perfect. Yeah, so we're here for uh, pretty much another month, and then I'm going to be doing even more walking. going to do the Cotswold Way with a friend of mine, Dave, and we're also planning some short trips, and we'll be in the UK uh, probably through until around November. Yeah, starting to think about heading back to New Zealand, so should be good. Absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about how badly we packed when we first started traveling. And sometimes we still pack badly. I mean, when I packed for this trip, I didn't make a list and I just kind of threw things in my bag, which was unwise. And it turned out that of the five or six t-shirts I packed, I think four of them were black. So my color scheme for this trip is is very dark. (laughs) Along the way, I've managed to pick up a few more colored t-shirts to balance things out a bit. But yeah, It just goes to show that even experienced travelers aren't necessarily very good at packing. You know, when we first started traveling, we took a whole lot of things that I thought were essential. And, you know, to be fair, we were thinking about going to the UK, stopping and, you know, kind of setting up house and then using that as like a hub and going out on little trips from there. What ended up happening, though, was quite dramatically different. So having things like a uh, travel iron, having things like our entire uh, movie collection on DVD. I remember saying when you were packing those that we didn't need those. Just saying. <laughs> I don't think we needed them at any point. Uh, yeah, you know, we watched a couple of movies. Oh, was Craig. Good. I made sure every time I needed to iron clothes, if we were going to a job interview or, you know, at the start of the week going into school because we were teaching English at that point, I'd make sure to point out that I was using that travel iron. And for the the hundred times that we used it, it was not worth the five kilos of weight. I do not believe you used it a hundred times. I would say maybe 20, possibly. Yeah, yeah. So we've learned a lot and hopefully we can pass on some of that wisdom uh, to you in this show. And so here's key point number one, which is exactly the opposite of packing, uh, you know, very heavy bits of plastic and metal, is to pack light. So yes, the biggest thing, the number one tip we give to anyone who's going to be traveling anywhere at any time is to pack light. And you really don't need more than a carry-on size bag. So the kind of bag that the airlines allow you to take on board with you. Yeah, the one bag rule to have one bag and have it carry-on sized has been really useful for us in most of our traveling life. We have been cheating a bit recently because we are looking to to head home, and so we're beginning to collect things, which is always a problem. But if you're traveling, one carry-on size bag, you should be able to pack it when you leave about three-quarters to four-fifths full. That should be everything that you need. Yeah, also these days more and more airlines are starting to charge you for carrying on a bag. And in some cases it costs more 
to carry your bag on with you than it does to check a bag. So look into that. You might want to have the carry-on size bag, but check it. That would also work. Uh, but we really do stand by the idea that that size is the right size. One issue we had recently was uh, we bought a, a pocket knife. I was going to be doing the Camino de Santiago, and we thought that it would be useful to have one. And since we're going back to New Zealand, we're starting to accumulate stuff. And so we bought this this pocket knife. And I saw it. It was in the toiletries kit, and I thought, great, it's packed in the toiletries kit. And the toiletries kit was going in the bag that we are checking in when we were traveling from La Coruña to London, except for that it wasn't. So we checked in Craig's bag, and then we got to security, and we were going through security, and they uh, they asked me to look at something. And I thought, oh, it must just be my water bottle, which is a bit strange. But it wasn't. It was the pocket knife. And I said, oh, my goodness, I was sure that it was in the toiletries kit, which was checked in the other bag. But the security guys were so nice. He said, oh, did you have you checked in both your bags? Have you both checked in? And we said, no, we've only checked in one. He said, oh, well, you can just go back and check in another bag. That's fine. You know, which was so unlike security guys. I mean, I've never had that. And so I went back through security, went back up to the, the check-in desk, had a really lovely conversation with the check-in ladies about my awesome Kathmandu bag. But yeah, we had this great conversation and uh, I checked my bag and I didn't have to throw away my pocket knife. So that was pretty cool. That was nice. But, you know, one bag isn't just about saving on the cost of checking a bag. Mm-hmm. It's also about the security of knowing your stuff is with you through the flight. That's true. It's about not having your bag show up in one airport when you show up in another airport. And it's good for other reasons as well. It means that you can easily transport your stuff for short distances without having to rely on other people. And being able to just pick up your bag and walk can get you out of some tricky situations no matter where you are. Yeah, definitely. We find it quite useful when we're staying somewhere moving like a kilometre or two kilometres away from the train station or something like that, and you can just walk to the train station to get your connection instead of having to get a taxi or find a bus or something like that. That's really handy. Now, I know some people are thinking, holy moly, with all of the clothes that I need to pack, there's no way I could fit it all in that tiny, tiny bag. I can't even fit it in the suitcase in which I could, you know, fit the entire contents of my wardrobe. How am I going to get all of this stuff for a whole weekend slash week slash month? (laughs) I think the most important thing to remember is that you should be prepared to do some washing, even if it's just a couple of items, even if you're just rinsing out a T-shirt or washing out your undies, uh, you should be prepared to, to wash some clothes. Most of the time it's not too hard. You can do it in a bathroom sink with just your regular soap. And if you have a towel, after you've had your shower, you can put your clothes on the towel and roll it up, and that will wick out a lot of the moisture. So that's one trick for helping things dry a bit faster. Yeah, be careful with woolens and stuff like that if you do that, though, because they can stretch. Yeah, but but I mean, uh, cottons and stuff, absolutely fine. But the thing is, wherever you're traveling, other people need to wash their clothes too. So if you're having to do a big wash, you can... Uh, if you're staying in Airbnbs or something like that, you can usually use the washing machine. You can find a laundromat. When we were in Spain recently with our friends Janine and Julie, we just went to a local laundromat. Had a bit of an adventure, actually, because we put money in the wrong machine, and then we had to go back the next day to get it back. It was not ideal. But anyway, yeah, we just washed our clothes, and, and it was great. You know, where you're heading will also impact what you pack, right? But quite often not as much as you'd think it would. Mm, We find that the best way to do things is to kind of consider the primary destination first. So I'm going to England. What am I going to wear? Imagine a normal day and then supplement. So I'm also going to Greece. So that means I probably need a couple more T-shirts, something like this. Yeah, one thing I've found about going to Europe as opposed to being in, uh, let's say, the New World is that (laughs) people here don't wear shorts that much, like Adult men don't tend to wear short trousers very often. Uh, Even on the hottest days, people are in, you know, full-length trousers. And so that's made my packing quite a bit easier. I like put in two pairs of trousers and one pair of shorts instead of the other way around. Yeah. One thing to do is to choose a color scheme or, for example, maybe have trousers that are all, like, neutral so that your tops can be more exciting. Um, And also make sure that everything goes with everything else. Don't have a pair of bright pink trousers and then a whole bunch of T-shirts that don't match that. Yeah, and thinking about where you're heading, if you need specialist equipment, like say you're doing a month-long trip and for one weekend you're going up to the Arctic Circle, 
have a look into the possibility of hiring some gear for that time,、mm. because you don't want to carry around an extra two jackets for a month in order to just wear them for you know one weekend or one short period in the trip. So if you are going places and need specialist equipment, like going up into the mountains, look into hiring specialist gear just for that.、It、can really make a difference. Or even sometimes buying them. For example, when I was walking the Camino. Uh, I didn't bring any of my specialist hiking tops because I knew I could buy them here really cheaply, and so just before I headed off, I went to Decathlon in Spain, bought a couple of new T-shirts, new pair of leggings, and yeah, since we're going back to New Zealand, I'm keeping them all. <laughs> accumulate <laughs> more accumulate. accumulation. <laughs> we're going exactly against all of our our normal precepts, but yeah, usually I'll just use them and then maybe donate them to a, a charity or something like that. Hey, be sure to pack clothes that you actually enjoy wearing. Either clothes that feel comfortable and are good, or clothes that make you look good that you feel confident in. You want to not be having kind of special one-off clothes that you only wear, you know, one-off, unless you have something special planned, right? If you're traveling for the Nobel Prize giving.、Mm-hmm. You either want to book that tuxedo hire well in advance, or you might want to bring your own gear with you. Yeah, I remember when I went to Kenya when I was kind of eighteen, nineteen. I went shopping and I bought a whole bunch of stuff because we're told we really needed lightweight clothing, and that we should wear skirts and dresses. And I just bought all this stuff, and it wasn't stuff that I would ordinarily wear, including a really awful pair of like three-quarter length trousers. And I don't know, I just felt not uncomfortable, but a bit strange during the whole trip. Whereas if I'd gone shopping with my own style in mind and thought, okay, I'm going to buy clothes that I feel comfortable in that are also lightweight, I think I would have been more comfortable. That's a good point.、Uh, on the other side, though, it's helpful to have fabrics that are light and quick drying, and preferably wicking and preferably smell proof.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Have clothes you're comfortable in, but also think about the fabrics. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely, when I was packing this time, I laid all my t-shirts out on the bed, and I chose the ones that were lighter, which is probably why I ended up with all these black ones. Because the black ones, for some reason, ended up being the lightest weight ones. I don't know why that is, but yeah,、uh, a lot of lightweight cottons were really good. I also have a couple of like sports wicking tops、uh, that are good for hiking, and they're really good for travel days because they kind of wick the sweat away from your body and also have some sort of smell-proof feature, which is really good. Because I don't know about you, but on travel days, they can just get oh, you can just get so sticky and gross. So it's nice to at least know that you're not also smelly. Yeah, it's, it's weird being in a plane or a bus sometimes, right? Because you're just You're stuck in that environment, and、uh-huh. there's nothing you can do. So you should have clothes that are, are comfortable and normally lighter is better, with an、mm-hmm. extra layer in case you do get cold. Yeah. While we're talking about this kind of material, you know, your lightweight, quick drying fabrics. A lot of people are thinking about athleisure kind of sportswear stuff, and yeah, that can be useful, but that might not fit your style. And one thing I've found really good is a company called Bluffworks, and they make real clothes that look pretty sharp out of the the same kinds of high performance fabrics that you get. So just because you're thinking of light, quick drying, wrinkle free materials,、uh, doesn't mean you need to look like you're just heading out to the gym. Yeah, these ones look really nice. I mean, Craig wears them for work,、uh, partners it with a nice jacket, something like that, and、uh, I think they look really good. But what I really like about them is that they have lots of secret pockets, zips. They're really good for travel. Unfortunately, they don't make women's clothing yet, and I'm really jealous of Craig's trousers because they look really nice. Although we have recently heard that they're in the process of like development and design for women's trousers, so I'm really looking forward to them coming out. Nice, and that reminds me. Try and choose clothes and fabrics that don't need to be ironed. If you can get away with just hanging them up in the bathroom, where a bit of steam and humidity is going to pull the wrinkles out, that is absolutely fantastic. And also, as I said before, if you're going to be using Airbnb or couch surfing or even staying in a hotel, quite often there are irons available. So if you need a one-off iron, you can probably find one. Definitely. And thinking about warmth, layers are better than having one big heavy thing. And so, what we tend to do is have some kind of polypropylene or preferably merino wool layer close to the body, then a t-shirt or shirt over the top, and then a puffer jacket over the top of that. 
And then like a, a hard case rain jacket over the top of that. Yeah, that's when we're really, really, really cold. But <laughs> most of the time, these uh, polypropylene layers just sit in the bottom of the bag. So it is okay to pack things that you don't necessarily plan to use as a, a backup backup. Yeah, as long as they're light and don't take up a lot of space. This week, the Indie Travel Podcast is sponsored by Kolu. Kolu is an app that helps you find the perfect New York guide. We've been playing around with the app and seeing some really fun stuff. Yeah, the way it works is you go on and you choose the area of New York that you're going to, and then you choose what you're interested in. For example, maybe nightlife, maybe food, and then it matches you up with a guide. You'll have several different guides to choose from at different price points. You can also choose the amount of people who are going to be on the tour and the amount of hours you want to do. I was interested in some some of the tech work they're doing, and all of their guides are checked with enhanced safety measures using systems called Checker and Moonlight. And then they also have a machine learning system that's unique to them that works on creating the best match between you and the guide. So all of the tech stuff looked pretty cool as well. Yeah, they really focus on maximizing the human connection between you and the guide. It's it's very personalized. So I like that about it. So this app is K-O-L-U, Kolu. And you can find them in iTunes, Google Play, or visit koluapp.com. And when you download the app on iPhone or Android, use the promo code Indy20 and get 20% off your first tour. That's Indy like Indy Travel Podcast, I-N-D-I-E, two zero. Okay, so up till now we've been giving kind of general advice about what you can pack, but why don't we talk specifically about what we pack in our bags? So we're going to go through the kind of different areas of clothing and talk about specifically what we have. Right. Well, let's start and get the worst out of the way first. Start at the bottom. (laughs) Start at the bottom. (laughs) Work our way up. What about undies? Well, I have eight pairs of undies. I used to just have five, but I figured that I'd prefer not to have to wash lots and lots of pairs of undies. And they're so light. They're so small. Uh, So I have eight pairs. They're just lightweight cotton ones. Yeah, I think the goal is to have, you know, a a pair of undies and socks so you can get through a whole week without having to do a wash yeah. and just working on that concept of, uh, you know, a weekly washing cycle. Mm-hmm. And if more are needed, you can always hand wash something. Yeah. So I have, I think, seven pairs of just plain ordinary ones and then one pair, which is kind of my, it's different from the rest. And when I get to that one, I'm like, right, time to think about doing some washing. <laughs> <laughs> I only have five pairs of socks because I don't wear socks every day. And, you know, in some situations you can wear socks more than once. Yeah, the socks that I have uh, tend to be quite high performance suitable for hiking. I think I have three pairs of hiking socks and two pairs of just lightweight, more casual socks. Yeah, for me, I'm always either wearing a pair of flip-flops, which are called jandals, or a pair of hiking shoes. So all of my socks are woolen hiking socks. Because we normally travel in summer, sometimes that can get pretty hot, but because of the wool, it, it all wicks away. Mm-hmm. And when I say wool, it's not purely wool. It's it's uh, got some elastic and things in there to, to shape and support the foot. You tend to buy the smart wool ones, right? Yeah, if I can, I'll get uh, smart wool socks. And if I can't or they're ridiculously expensive like they are in New Zealand, I'll go to a specialist sports store. So at the moment, I've got a mix of Mac Pack and smart wool socks. Mm-hmm. I also carry two bras and a sports bra. Craig does not. Thanks for that. <laughs> Thought it needed to be said. <laughs> so I mentioned I mentioned footwear there, and yeah, I'm I just have exactly that. A pair of flip flops. I use them day to day. I use them, uh, you know, around the the house if I need to use them. Yeah, as much as I possibly can. And then when walking or when traveling, because they're a lot heavier than the flip-flops, I put on my boots. Mm-hmm. And I've just re-bought the same pair of boots. I think it's going to be the sixth or seventh pair that I've owned. I've, <laughs> I've had these off and on for the last 15 years. The Keen Targi 2 mid-boot. Nice. Uh, yeah. I've, I'm waiting on They're going to arrive this week. I'm very excited so I'm getting, for you. getting a new set coming in. Yeah, I also have hiking boots. I have some really nice ones at the moment. They're Anu ones, and they're just black. They're beautiful. Oh, man, I love them a lot. But the waterproofing is starting to go, and uh, they're just starting to to disintegrate because we've had them for over 18 months and used them for two quite serious hikes. So I'm going to have to replace my ones as well. I also have a pair of bright pink flip-flops. I'm not sure why I have bright pink ones, but that is just 
what was available. To go with all your black (laughs) t-shirts. And I also have a pair of ballet flats. Um, I like to have a pair of nicer shoes, and I think that it's worth packing a pair if you're going to be planning to go out. Craig sometimes carries nicer shoes, especially if we're going to a conference. When we went to a wedding a couple of years ago, we just went and I bought some nice heels and then gave them away. So I don't recommend packing heels, mostly because I despise heels with with a vengeance. But, you know, uh, if you do need nice shoes, pack them only if you're planning to go to a, a special event. Otherwise, pack something really simple like ballet flats that can be kind of dressed up. Yeah, and I think with the nicer shoes for conferences and things, that's a perfect example of something that if you can buy cheaply enough there for one-off wear and then donate away, or you can sometimes hire shoes. So if it's just, you know, if it's a two-day conference in the middle of a two-month trip, I'm going to spend the money and just buy a cheap pair to get through the, the conference. But if I'm going to half a dozen conferences, I'll bring them from home or I'll hold on to them after I make that first purchase. Mm-hmm. Okay, thinking about your ordinary clothes, so the things that go on the top. So first of all, tops. Well, we carry three or four regular T-shirts. Some of those are like performance hiking shirts. We particularly like this uh, kind of sports performance wear. Quite often they look quite nice, so they're fine for tourism or just for, I mean, we spend a lot of time indoors these days working, so it doesn't really matter what we're wearing. You also need to balance that against the times when you want to get dressed up. So I've got, I think, two T-shirts and two long-sleeve collared shirts Mm -hmm. and two short-sleeve collared shirts at the moment. And so that makes up all of my my daily wear on the top. Yeah, I think I have four T-shirts and two kind of nicer tops. So yeah, that works out well. Uh, I've also got a lightweight singlet top, which I'm enjoying in the UK at the moment, because believe it or not, the UK is actually having a warm summer. It's amazing. I see people, uh, you know, chat with people and they're, they're complaining about the heat. I'm like, oh, it's normal. We mm-hmm. have a summer. Hey. I've got a lightweight singlet top as well, and I usually use it actually in winter when it's too cold to just wear a T-shirt. And I wear it underneath like a merino top or something like that as an extra layer. But I can also use it if I'm going to the beach or as a backup shirt when all my other shirts are are in the wash. Yeah, we talked before about uh, having that bottom layer of merino or polyprop for for warmth and then also a puffer jacket on top. Yeah, last weekend we went down to Bristol to meet the owners of the house we're going to be looking after in a couple of months. And they're off to walk the Camino de Santiago. And we were talking about the clothes to pack. They've already done one one Camino before, so they kind of know more or less what to pack. But we're talking about layering, whether merino or uh, polypropylene is better. And uh, she said, oh, yeah, I'm going to take a fleece. And I said, oh, what, what about a puffer jacket? She said, oh, you know, they tend to be quite big. And I, I pulled out my tiny, tiny backpack. And I said, oh, well, I've got a puffer jacket in here. And she's like, you don't. <laughs> and I pulled it out, and it just packs down so small. She was really excited about it. So she's like making notes about the brand. But, yeah, it was a backpack, very small puffer jacket with, you know, down inside. It was very nice. Cool. Now, on the bottom, a couple of pairs of lightweight trousers. I do tend to get those Bluffworks ones. I stay away from jeans because they're great for everyday wear, but they're not so good if you have to walk in the heat. They can get a bit uncomfortable on a plane or a hot bus, and they're really slow to dry. So that combination of things, when you're not wearing them, the fact they're heavy and slow to dry... Mm -hmm. And that's put me off. I, I have experimented with bringing them on trips, and you every see. time I kind of walk away and go, oh, they, they look good and they're comfortable, but no, no, they keep on keep on making me angry. I remember one time we were with a group of people, and someone was traveling with jeans, and we put things in the wash, and I think the jeans weighed about half of all of the stuff that we were getting washed. And, of course, in this particular laundromat, they charged you per weight. So oh, this no. one pair of jeans <laughs> <laughs> cost, like, you know, five or six dollars to wash, and everything else also cost five or six dollars to wash. It was a bit unfortunate. That's crazy. They must have been some solid jeans. Oh, they were. Uh, also have a pair of swimming shorts, uh, good for the beach or the pool. Yeah, or you could bring a skirt. I've got shorts in this case. I also have a nice skirt for the evening. So, I mean, this is up to you. You might want to have a dress. You might want to have a nice pair of trousers. In Craig's case, he has the Bluffworks trousers, which can be dressed up or down. In my case, I've just bought a new silk wraparound skirt. So I used to have one. It was the best thing. I could use it for anything. You know, you can tie it up in all sorts of different ways, but I usually use it as a skirt. And you can, it's reversible. So you've got two different colors. So 
that's um that's my kind of nice thing. I, I wear that with uh, one of my many black tops, one of the nicer black tops that I have. And I also have a pair of stockings and I wear my black ballet flats when I'm going out. So that works really well. Yeah, and also have uh, exercise gear, like if you're a, a jogger or you like to hit the gym. That kind of stuff tends to be really nice and lightweight. The only extra weight issues you run into there are specialist shoes. Mm -hmm. So it can be useful if you're going to be doing a lot of city walking. You can sometimes get sneakers that will be a bit Mm cross-platform and you will be able to use like in a hotel gym or a a local gym if if you're hiring that as well as walking around in the city. can take a bit of work to find something specialist in that way. Yeah. Now, we mentioned earlier that we carry a thermal top and bottoms for cold locations. Uh, you might not need this. If you're going away for two weeks somewhere hot, then you can just avoid this. But in our case, we might decide to travel somewhere colder at the drop of a hat, or the weather might change. I mean, we're in England, right? So we just pack uh, a hat, scarf, gloves, thermal top, thermal bottom, and just kind of pack them away at the bottom of our bag. We've actually just got some of these um, plastic bags, like space saver bags that you, you pack and then you roll up to get all the air out. And I think that's going to be really useful for this kind of thing, just to put at the bottom of the bag, keep it out of sight until you really need it. Now, it's important to think about what happens if it rains as well. For me, I tend to lean towards having a jacket. So I've got like a mountaineering style uh, outer shell, and it doesn't suit all situations, right? It's Mm. not something I feel comfortable wearing out to a nice restaurant, but it's fine for everything else. So I just take the hit in those cases. If I'm going to a conference and it's unusually cold, I'll uh, try and get a a secondhand blazer or jacket, or I'll pop in and buy a new suit. Uh, That's only had to happen once, I think, so it's not too bad. But yeah, for Everyday use, normal travel, a mountaineering style jacket has been perfect for me. Yeah, now I've bought many of these mountaineering style jackets and they have just not worked for me. I don't know why they just keep getting wet, uh, like sleeves. I end up getting really wet around the wrist and I f- end up feeling really uncomfortable. So I've moved away from that and I tend to use a poncho that goes all the way over myself and my bag if I'm like changing location on a rainy day. And then if I'm just in the city, I'll use an umbrella. So I just carry an umbrella with me. Perfect. I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, there's a couple of bits and pieces, obviously, like glasses and sunglasses. I carry a leather belt. And once again, if it's a travel day, I make sure I'm wearing my trousers with the belt. So I'm not carrying that weight on my back. And then you have to remember to take it off at security, which sometimes doesn't happen. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That happens from time to time for sure. Maybe. Uh, I've also got a sun hat that I got at the moment, Mm -hmm. uh, like a Panama style hat. Looks Looks, so good. Looks dashing. Yeah. I've just got a regular kind of cap hat. I also carry a pashmina, like a big black scarf, basically, which is nice for the evening uh, because I don't have a nice coat or jacket for wearing out with my skirt that I told you about earlier. But a pashmina is just nice because it packs down quite small. And if I feel a little bit cold, I can wrap that around. I also have a light scarf for days where it's just a little bit chilly. I I get cold neck and uh, I like to feel warm there. So, But you might want to consider uh, packing a sarong instead of a skirt for the beach because they they can be really handy. You can use them as a a towel for sitting on the beach. Uh, You can use them you know, if you're staying in a hostel or something, just for wrapping around yourself when you go to the toilet. Uh, I don't have one, but I know a lot of people find them really useful. One thing we didn't mention was a swimsuit. So yeah, it's definitely worth having a swimsuit. Uh, Craig mentioned glasses. I've started carrying a spare pair of glasses after the great sauna debacle of a few years ago, where I stupidly went into a sauna with my glasses and they cracked. So I ordered new ones and I got them delivered to my friend's house because we were traveling around at the time. And she and her father drove halfway across Austria to deliver them to us, which I still remember as one of the sweetest things that has ever been done for me. So thanks, Sabina. So that's something that I don't plan to use. Well, I have used it recently, actually, because we were going to have a sauna when we were in Oviedo, and I, I switched my current glasses for my backup pair before going down to the sauna. I didn't wear them in, but I thought just in case. <laughs> You know, as we wrap up, it's interesting to think that when we first started traveling, I think clothes were about three quarters of my bag. And now I have a much, much, much smaller bag and clothes take up maybe 40 to 50% of it. Definitely less than half, but somewhere close to half. 
Yeah, I think so. I think it's because before we thought we needed more and more stuff. And when you're packing, you think, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to be using this. But really, you don't need that many clothes. You know, you need the clothes that you're wearing in at least another set. They're obviously a little bit more, but you don't need a lot of clothes. Yeah, I think that that idea of just having what you need is important. Not having things you might need, mm-hmm. but just being being happy with the idea of, hey, this is stuff that I'll wear every single day. And, you know, if something out of the ordinary comes up, if an amazing opportunity comes up to do something that's out of the scope that I know will happen, having a little bit more money available to go and buy something. Mm -hmm. Like people enjoy shopping on holidays anyway, and people doing longer trips, just going shopping is is normal. So, you know, it doesn't have to be something big or flash. There's lots of great stores around where you can get something good enough at a reasonable price. And so if you're really out of scope on what you thought was happening on the trip, it's not the end of the world. You don't need to pack that thing that you might wear if this happens and that happens. You can just go and buy it. And actually later on, you'll have a souvenir. I really like when I'm back home to look down and go, oh, I got this in France or this top is from Panama. You know, I enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. It's really neat. It's a a really practical souvenir, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Cool. I think that wraps it up. If there's something you think we have forgotten or something you think we're stupid to put in our bags, let us know on Facebook, Twitter, or by email. You can also leave a comment on the show notes at IndieTravelPodcast.com. Well, that's us for this week. Until next time, travel well.